Good morning. This is a player recap and reflections on last night's uh, Dragon Slayer Barrow Maze Session 3. Um, okay, so I've had a request to try to give data before I recap. So uh, data is this is our third session of the Barrow Maze uh, campaigns. I'm not certain what the location is on the map, the name of the barrow or anything. Um, we, um, in this particular session, we went through just a handful of rooms. We backtracked, um, so we picked up from session two, we had a, we had a, a henchman die in a battle. So we backtracked using our maps, uh, without problem. He did, uh, our MC did roll for wandering monsters as he is, uh, supposed to. We exited and deposited the body in the main chamber, and then we went to a new location. We went up a north passageway, um, and we ended up um, investigating um, a hallway that went east and discovered a porcullus or bars, like a cell, and a handful of doors uh, on the north on the north walls of that east passage. And the very end of that hall was a was a bricked wall, not of the same architecture as the rest of the walls. So um, once we got that information, we went back to that first door on the on the north hallway and uh, uh, entered that space. In that space, we, just, we triggered a trap, uh, a, a stone slab fell from the ceiling, blocking off our exit and trapping myself and Grimwolf in a, uh, a a room with no light source, and we faced skeletons, straight skeletons. Um, uh, I was able to get a torch lit. Um, they were able to find the switch to, uh, Dora was able to find the switch to bring the wall up, and they came in to help us finish off the skeletons. Unfortunately, not before Grimwolf's, uh, Grimwolf suffered a critical a uh, hit against him, uh, killing him, our paladin uh, uh, down to minus three. Um, we finished off the skeletons together. My character suffering pretty good damage here. Or actually, my, my character didn't suffer any damage here. And uh, Grimwolf then made a death save at the end of combat, and he unfortunately failed and uh, died in the arms of Felonius, which is uh, Jorge's... Um, right hand man or man at arms and that man at arms became jorge's immediate level one uh character uh a, a paladin as well and he suited up in all of the gear of his former character and so jorge uh felonius now um uh here and uh as we um contemplated uh, to leave and we contemplated some uh, other uh um uh, as we left and headed down to, to to investigate other chambers, we were set upon from behind again by by skeletons with a blue sapphire uh, embedded in their skull, in their forehead, two of them. And here is where my character suffered a critical hit against these 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 particular skeletons. I don't know what they're called, but they have a blue sapphire. Um, and these. Skeletons, we we did finally sunder, but not before I took serious damage, and Garwin was killed, so we lost another henchman. So so, um, all told, we've had three sessions, and all three sessions have spanned just one day of world time. So session one started with us being dropped off, or being guided to the edge of the barrow, uh, the mounds. Uh, we spent that morning finding the barrel maze entrance. And then session, and that was uh, session one. We 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 began to investigate uh, uh, once one floor down into the actual maze, and that was session one. We didn't go we didn't go into any rooms there. So just the one room down into the into the into the entrance. Session two, we investigated six rooms, six rooms, uh, and we lost uh, Rolf in in a, in a combat with uh, zombie light cruisers. Uh, and in session three, we investigated just two more rooms and a hallway, and we faced skeletons and then uber skeletons, skeletons that were driven by some sapphire. Um, this sapphire was interesting because if you don't destroy it, the bones will reassemble and continue to fight. 
So we we had to destroy both sapphires or shatter both sapphires to break the magic that made these bones reanimate and reanimate and reanimate. It's fantastic. Um, so all told, in three sessions, we have investigated eight rooms, and uh, we of course have found numerous passageways and doors. We just haven't gotten to. We just haven't opened them yet. We haven't we haven't investigated them yet. Um, and we have lost two henchmen and a main character and my character has suffered all told um five points of damage last session or three points of damage last session which i got back with binding of wounds this session i lost um five points and got back or no i lost uh, seven points and got back three i think with bind or one with binding of wounds. i lost six points got back one with the binding wounds so i'm at seven hp out of 12. And that's that's kind of the nitty gritty details. Okay, so hopefully this helps uh, the, the the individual that's trying to follow along with the barrel maze stuff. Cannot tell you exactly the name of this barrel maze. It's just entrance to the barrel maze is all I know. So, uh, and I do not know the names of the creatures described as skeletons, zombies, and he describes them. Eloy does a brilliant job describing them. I prefer when a GM doesn't say it's a goblin. So these are goblins, right? I prefer there's a description. Uh, and skeleton is an apt descriptive term, right? It's an animated bones. Skeleton works. So I actually like it when a GM doesn't use the name of the creature because, you know, um, we, you know, I just think it's more authentic and I think it's more mysterious when we don't name every creature. Oh, you're fighting kobolds. Oh, we're in a battle with kobolds, right? Describe the creatures. Let us wonder, are they kobolds? Are they, what are they, right? So uh, personally, I can't stand it when a GM says, uh, you know, here they are, right? That doesn't mean we wouldn't identify them as kobolds and then later know they're kobolds, but okay. So that's that. Um, so that really is the recap too. I mean, this is this uh, two hours, all the sessions have been roughly two hours, which is perfect. You know, 90 minutes to two hours is, is perfect for, for me. We did have, again, um, we had a ranger, a human ranger, Donald, that is Ho uh, Jose's character. We had a human paladin, Grim Wolf, that is Jorge's character. Level one, all level one. Uh, myself, a Cyclops fighter. We have Nagion, uh, a, a, a elven thief that is um, Dell's character. And we had David playing a half-orc assassin, Dora um, Swiftscar, I think. Swiftscar, something like that. Um, and uh, did I miss anybody? That's five, right? That was us. So David, Dell uh jorge jose and myself yeah and uh, of course um jorge again uh he had two uh retainers one a torchbearer uh Phil philomena and felonius his man at arms and these are basically uh retainers but backup characters and so felonius just steps right in uh and dons the armor and the garb and as the accolade of the paladin and uh, voila Jorge's on he's he, he doesn't miss a beat right okay um Garwin and Rolf were both men at arms hired by the thief Nasian um and they've both been lost so we'll have to hire more retainers uh again what makes this work is there's four or five player characters but we also have three to five retainers and this is what makes this all a doable doable deal um so again, three sessions, we visited eight rooms, a couple of hallways. We have encountered mostly zombies, skeletons thus far. Uh, I, not quite a wraith. Uh, I don't think we've encountered a wraith type creature, but there was another creature that, uh, again, the way he defined it, I wasn't certain might be a wraith, right? But we killed it pretty quick, so I don't think so. Okay. So again, outstanding. Um, we had great role play, right? Uh, we had Dora uh oh yeah okay so and then we ended up once we uh once we dealt with that we were all beat up pretty bad and we had three dead we decided it was time to exit the mounds uh and we built a funeral prior and we we gave up all the shattered sapphires burned along with our three companions uh as part of the rules you can bury your dead or pay to bury your dead and you get xp you get a portion of xp for that if you if you pay to bury your dead or you pay to burn your dead or you pay a tribute so we did it narratively through a fire a, a pyre we burned all the dead on the top of the mound 
among these uh, standing stones. And we burned 200 gold worth of these sapphires with it, uh, much to Dora and Dell's uh, character, the thief and the assassin. Uh, I don't think we're real. The thief, the, the assassin, or the thief, excuse me, was definitely not happy about us burning the gemstones, right? You know, hey, they're dead. You know, why do we have to go broke, you know, burning them up, right? So per pretty cool. And with that, we used our map to navigate back to the main town of Helix, the township of Helix, which is where it's kind of our headquarters for Barrel Maze. Uh, Eloy had the map of Helix, put it up for us, and then walked us through all the key places on the map, which was very cool. We entered town at dusk. Uh, we did not encounter any um, spots on the map, nor any wandering monsters on our trek back, which was, again, uh, facilitated beautifully. Um, and uh, as we come into town at dusk, the bells for service are ringing. My character immediately goes to St. Yig, the chapel of St. Yig, and, and uh, attends the service. The rest of the crew, uh, the thief and the ranger, go to the money lender to sell what treasures we had, exchange or sell those treasures to get actual gold. Um, Dora and um, uh, Felonius went to the tavern as Felonius is looking for the um, the courtesan that his former um, um, leader, Grimwolf, had a relationship with. He wants to go pay her restitution for the death of Grimwolf. So he sees he sees her as an inheritance, kind of a, a paying an homage in, in gold for uh, in, to honor his former uh, master, which is very cool. So again, Jorge, you know, playing this beautifully. My character goes to St. Yig, and again, I am lawful. I follow St. Yig. I am a fighter who had wanted to be a paladin and couldn't make the cut. So I'm pretty devout, but devout, you know, in a, in a certain way. I'm not a cleric, so to speak. Um, I end up giving it a uh, uh, gold there in honor of our dead and talking to the priest and asking them to give prayers upon, you know, for our dead. Um, Dell and Donald transact with the halfling there. Um, and the halfling um, scufflebutt or something, or huff, huff and puff, halfling huffle, huff and puff, I think is what Eloy said. Um, transacts and gives them a percentage of the value of the treasures, and they accept, uh, begrudgingly, uh, Nasian accepts, but did not. He tried to barter that up a little bit, and unfortunately didn't go well. Donald accepted whatever he got for his two pieces, and we ended up coming out of there with about 360, 405 gold, I think, each for everything, for all the treasure that we were able to uh, get away with, including coins as well as relics like uh, amphora, a couple of necklaces, and a ring. Okay, so those were sold. Um, Dora and uh, Elo did a great job uh, as as they as they went to the tavern and they. They met the three women there. They met uh, they met the uh, local men for hire. Uh, we found out these were the guys that were in the maze that ran away, that that warned us, you need to get out of here. This place is crazy. And they left. Uh, I met the priest and the the, the two accolades. Uh, I also learned of uh, two of the wealthier businessmen in town attended along with uh, the Lord's son, Lord Crufix, or Crufix or Crufix. Uh, who is the lord of the whole land's son? He's uh, he 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 very often comes to the to the gambling house here in Helix. So we got a lot of NPC information. We got it organically, which was very cool. My character saw and witnessed these people, asked questions, learned who these people were. Um, Dora and Felonius interacted at the inn with the proprietor, the barkeep, and uh, the the women there and the and the hirelings. So we we or we actually met all of these individuals, we learned about these places and it all happened organically, which is fantastic, right? We're role-playing and uh, it's the best way to do it, right? Instead of just having a list of NPCs that we know, which sometimes you can do, you can just give people a list, say, you already know these people, we'll get to them if you need them later, right? So it was just, it was just fantastic. And we concluded there, uh, as the service ended, I talked to the priest, they concluded their work and we all met in town center as night as it's dark now, and uh, that's where we concluded. We'll pick up probably with some with some administrative work for session four. Maybe do carousing rules. I don't know how many of the guys are interested in doing the carousing rules. My character is lawful, 
and probably wouldn't carouse. Uh, there'd be no reason for my character do, to do carousing. Uh, I would only spend my gold on uh, in tribute or my gold for a re re-equipping, uh, restocking, upgrading equipment, or of course paying for the services of somebody. So my character is uh, again a cyclops. Uh, alcohol is poison to the cyclops, so I certainly would not carouse in that way, right? Um, so very cool. Man, we had we had we saw it all uh, last night. We my dark vision became relevant last night. Uh, my my ability to search was used last night. Uh, Dell did some trap checks and search checks and certainly tried to trigger the door to get it up. Adora did find the switch finally to get the door going. Um, and the rules are just beautiful. They work great. They allow, they allow a dynamism of, 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 of a size of party like this, but they also keep it reasonable for Eloy to adjudicate. For instance, only two people can search at one time. So Dora was searching every turn for some way to get this door trigger open while uh, uh, while our while our um, ranger was hoisting the door with a crowbar, using his strength to lift the door, right? Okay. Um, so the thief at that point couldn't do anything. He, you know, only two people could search at a time around the door. I was lighting a torch while Grimwolf was attempting to protect us in the dark. Um, his protection of evil uh, helped us. I could see in the dark, but Grimwolf couldn't, so I needed to get that torch lit. And then we 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 fought for two or three rounds, four rounds before they got the door up. And fortunately, I deftly avoided everything and managed to kill a couple of these skeletons but we were overwhelmed and grimwolf unfortunately succumbed and before they got the door up and it was fantastic the battle with the two skeletons uh dora uh with two beautiful crossbow shots uh uh helped sunder these skeletons and destroyed one of the sapphires for us in a direct shot on the sapphire the second sapphire we had to actually crush with a with a mace the uh Felonius had to destroy with a mace once the bones began to reanimate themselves. Uh, uh, as as Nasian was carrying the skull around, it had this beautiful glowing blue sapphire in it. Uh, it's just these are the games, these are the tells, these are the things that we that you do, and um, these become the this this the, these this is the experience, and it's the experience that millions of people have been having for over 50 years in 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 kitchens and basements in garages in living rooms all over the world right and um it is fantastic and, and barrel maze i again i haven't seen it haven't read it but again Eloy tells me he spent the whole weekend perusing it and he said it is a fantastic piece of work there is no doubt it is deep it is fleshed out and it is unique and uh but yet recognizable fantasy that we all know and love so it's so cool and um i'm really digging the role play i mean it's it is it is d20 old school in that there's some meta talk right i'm going to search for something i'm going there's going to be some meta talk we're talking about maps we have to hold the maps up we have to have we have to have dialogue and conversation that's not necessarily um a narrative description in character um However, even when I'm talking about the maps, even when I'm talking about uh, orienting, the, uh, you know, the um, when I'm talking about data that is more game speak, I'm still in character. I mean, I don't really leave character even as, um, and I don't use a voice. I'm, I, I'll do an affectation on my voice so people know, you know, I'll change my tone or something so people know I'm talking as a Cyclops. But the re I don't really use voices and things. I'll just affect my voice so it's different from who I am and what I'm saying. But the reality is I'm never really out of character, even when I say, hey, which door are we looking at, guys, or whatever, right? So it, that's just the way I role play. And for me, that has been role playing, you know. Um, I obviously have role played at a deeper level in different styles of games, depending on what we're doing. But but this is just old home, man. This is going home. This is doing what we, we've done is in, for 50 years, uh, 60 years now. 70 years now 70 uh, i don't know i'm 50 at least for me 40 something years 30 something years but i mean as a culture this style of osr old school d20 hearkening back to the roots of the hobby for the d20 again when i say roots of the hobby i know there are other there were other games tunnels and trolls and rune quest and there were other other role-playing games but i mean the roots of the hobby for uh for guys who play D D, old D D. 
fantastic. And again, we had great, some great moments in role play, uh, some quips that I know um, they're important to me because in those moments, that's where I know who Najian is. That's where I know who Donald is. That's where I know who Jorge's uh, felonious is. Those quips, those moments, um, uh, uh, those subtle descriptions, that's, you can't help but but uh, be in the headspace of a six foot eight cyclops in underneath in, in a in a burrow mound with this ragtag group of adventurers and not start getting a sense of who we are and what we're about. And all of that just plays back into the the imaginative mind space for me as a role player. Right. And so um, and yes, we're hunting for treasure. Yes, we're dealing with traps. Yes, we're killing monsters. Doesn't change that I'm role playing the Cyclops that has a particular attitude, a lawful, a good attitude about the world and is going to act a particular way. We had a great moment at the pyre where Donald says a few words over the dead. And he, he, he says, uh, you know, uh, drink heartily from the horn in hell and uh, drink one for me and I may join you soon. And of course my character is Cyclops. It, it, it says in the book, Cyclops cannot understand metaphor language. So right. R literally after he says it, I said to him, they can't they're dead they can't drink from a horn right and this is important to me because i'm the cyclops is defined this way and it's a chance for me to role play right uh and have this it's a chance for me to say to donald as as a cyclopsian person they can't drink from a horn what are you an idiot you know it's what are you crazy they're dead right um not getting the metaphor right and uh it creates a moment where donald says uh you know it uh well you it's trust me, it, it's a metaphor, right? So it's we have this interplay and it allows us to it allows us to not shine a light, it allows us to play our characters in these subtle moments. I mean, we're it, you know, in split seconds, we have these moments where our character is revealed as we play. I, I hate losing Grimwolf. And I've said this before, there's no such thing as a meaningful death in gaming. There is only meaningful life. And if you are a meaningful character, then we will mourn the loss of your character how you die it just doesn't matter it's the same in real life if i go out and die in a car accident it'd be tragic friends and family would be heartbroken maybe hopefully but how i die hopefully would be tragic if i dropped out of a heart attack or disease or cancer you know it's all it's all horrible right it's all sad it's how i live my life that people will mourn they'll they'll mourn the missing of me they'll learn who i was or what i was or what i achieved maybe or how i might have affected their lives or how I die will is never relevant, right? How we pass is it's only relevant, I suppose, if you die, uh, you know, as a victim of a violent crime or something that's that's a, that's tr a truly tragic, right? Uh, but the reality is, it's it's who we are, it's how we live, and I feel that way about our characters. If I portray Fex the Cyclopsian in a particular way, and a, as we play, hopefully, there would be a reason they would miss. Facts, right? They would go, oh, that's too bad. We liked facts, right? Um, and that's, you know, Grimwolf. Uh, how he dies is not relevant. It's it's who he was and, and how he, you know, the the character that existed there that now Jorge's not gonna play. He's gonna play a paladin, but this paladin will have a different, a different personality, a different attitude. And what happens with him through action and through events and through story, um, oh, I should story through events becomes his story who he is, what it transpires, what he survives, et cetera, becomes the thing that matters to us if he if he could die or should die, does die. And that becomes why it's meaningful, is who he was, what he did is meaningful, how he died is not. So um, that's, yeah, I've, I've never adhered to the meaningful death syndrome in our hobby. Um, play your character, play it to the hilt, there will be meaning to your character. And if your character dies, there'll be meaning. Um, there will be loss. There will be mourning to that, that, that thing. Anyway, great game. Dragon Slayer without question. Uh, I knew that when I when I bought it. I knew that when I read it the first time. I knew that when I flipped through it. I knew that when I prepared and ran some solo stuff. I knew that when I prepared and ran my local group. It, it's the only OSR you would ever need. If this is the kind of fantasy gaming you want to do, it's it's all you ever need. Uh, but La Advanced Labyrinth Lord works and Adva OSC, Advanced OSC works and the original games, BX uh, Moldvay, uh, AD&D. I mean, let's face it, 
um, you know, pick pick the one that has the features and the rules and the depth that that allow you to do this thing without a lot of a lot of homework, without a lot of tweaking or changing of the rules, right? So if 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 you like AD and D raw, and you don't have to homebrew or tweak to suit you, then voila, you're good to go, right? Um, so Dragon Slayer is is already done all of it for us. All we have to do is adhere to it. And then Barrel Maze again uh, is uh, is a is is a D twenty mega dungeon uh, setting that would work with any old D twenty OSR D twenty formula, right? So uh, Barrel Maze is not tied to Dragon Slayer. It just happens to be designed and written, authored by the same guy, Greg Gillespie. But I think Dragon Slayer works beautifully with it so far. Uh, it's fantastic. Anyway, I want to thank Eloy, our MC, our maze controller. Fantastic. Three sessions in, man, and I'm totally enjoying it hooked. I write a journal after every – I write a journal every morning. Uh, in the morning, I get up, I have my coffee, I write my journal. I post that. We get bonus XP for mapping and, and, and journaling. So I've got maps, which I, I can't really share. I don't have a scanner to upload them, but I share them in the uh, – I'm doing it. And then I do a journal and then I do a recap, which I do for every game I play in or or run because I like sharing a vlog of our experiences. So anyway, I hope you all enjoy these. Um, uh, I cannot recommend enough, again, uh, Dragon Slayer and Barrel Maze. Uh, fantastic. Uh, I look forward to We are playing again next week on Wednesday. So we will we will get right back to this. And uh, we'll start probably with a little bit of administrative work and then back to the maze, I think. So, all right, everybody out there, have a wonderful week. Bye.